Uh, my name is David Moshfer. I'm a professor of history and humanities here at IE University. I went to Stanford University for my undergraduate. I went to University of California, Berkeley, and did my PhD there um, in European intellectual history. I've taught uh, critical thinking courses in the management programs, in the master's management uh, programs at IE. And um, I've taught uh, history courses in the international relations uh, department. So history of international relations, uh, political theory, um, courses like that. So my idea of it was to try to um, give students a sense that this idea, innovation, um, itself uh, is something radically new that until probably around uh, 350 years ago or so, um, until the modern world, um, almost all of human civilization defined itself against the idea of innovation. They thought innovation was the worst possible thing you could actually have in the world because, and this is where the God part of the course actually comes from because they had the idea of um, civilization as based on some kind of uh, underlying cosmic order or some ultimate message from God telling each group of people in society who they should be, what they should be doing, usually in a very hierarchical scale. Um, and uh, so anybody who wanted to do something new uh, or who wanted to innovate um, would have been seen as corrupting uh, that ultimate order, corrupting the, the, the message of God. So looking at change um, more in terms of corruption rather than celebrating it as innovation, um, if you don't know that, you would miss essentially the whole history of civilization until the modern period. So I want students to understand um, where does this idea of innovation as something that we actually celebrate itself really come from? In the years that I've, I've been teaching, I've noticed increasingly that uh, a lot of students have a perspective on innovation and te technological transformation where they almost feel like it's moved beyond the realm of human decision making. Um, it's this thing that is happening and will happen regardless of what we think, what we do. Um, and so I want to give students, especially a critical perspective on that, because I find it to be such a dangerous, uh, notion. Um, and so to do that, um, I, I try to problematize the idea of innovation in a contemporary standpoint and say, you know, is everything new that happens in itself somehow a good thing? And so I want students to have a sense that once the idea of innovation moves outside of the realm of human decision making, loses any connection to how we would want actually to live our lives. Maybe it'll become uh, incredibly destructive rather than the vision of progress and things are getting better and better, uh, which was at the heart of innovation when it first kind of emerged as an idea in the, in the modern world. So that's a kind of overview of the course as a whole. Think the technology could also be developed in ways to um, enhance more concentration rather than less concentration. Um, and it could be enhanced in such a way that it doesn't lead to more anonymity, but less anonymity. Um, so that's what I would, I would actually hope for. Um, I think a lot of the reason why the technology has developed in the way that it has um, is uh, because it's focused on getting people to uh, consume information as quickly as possible alongside all of the other things that they consume. Um, and very often, it's better to have a, a distracted person as the person you're envisioning for if that's your goal, rather than somebody who is sitting down and seriously thinking and concentrating on something. But that's not to say that you know, things, there could be innovation to address those issues. Um, so I think the bigger problems are not technological ones. I think the bigger problems are, again, questions about what kind of society do we want to have? How do we want to live with each other? Not so much about, you know, um, what is technically possible or not possible how technology is changing the experience of education and what education is supposed to be about 
um, then I think it's certainly true that whatever technological means come to be become available are seen as ways of uh, okay um how do i for example during the pandemic and as a result of the pandemic certain institutions saying okay this showed us how we can actually have a university without having a lot of students be present um, or how we can try to create some kind of a hybrid where students are there or not there uh, without really too much thinking about, has this been a good experience in terms of education? Uh, it hasn't, honest, to be completely honest, uh, in, in my experience of, of teaching it. Um, uh, teaching on, you know, on a computer um, and being in a classroom are radically different experiences. It's the same thing for having students who are there and who are not there. Um, and uh, very often, I think, um, when it comes to how technology changes education, um, again, the focus comes on how can we get even more people? Um, how can we get uh, um, people who otherwise might not have the opportunity to access um, uh, this experience? Um, and put them in the same room. And uh, now we can technologically do this. And not a lot of thought is paid to, are you actually putting them in the same room when you're doing it in this way? Well, my hope is that the actual experience of it has actually opened up a kind of critical avenue about asking questions exactly about what is the purpose of all of this? What are we trying to do here? Those people who see themselves as um, innovators um, and entrepreneurs and uh, and etc. I I I wish that instead of the perspective being so much focused on I'm going to do something I'm going to do the next big thing the next new thing that their focus would turn much more on. Um, how do we fix the institutions that we have um, in, in, in the world today? Um, uh, and um, it's, it, it's one thing for someone to, again, think I'm going to do something radically new and better than anything that has existed um, versus um, all of us see, given the world that we live in, that many of the institutions that we have uh, are losing trust, uh, don't have the trust that they had in the in the past. Um, and so what am I going to do actually to change that? Um, and so I think that would that would start from a different perspective because people would have to immediately kind of identify with the welfare of things that already exist rather than somehow thinking that they could junk what they don't like and do something new and so that's what i that's what i'd wish uh, because i think that's what we kind of desperately actually need at the present moment we need we need a shift in perspective towards people really identifying with what there is um especially given all of the anger and resentment that exists towards a lot of what is already present so people can think about how do we fix things um so that um, people don't feel so marginalized within their own societies uh, very often and feel like they don't have a voice. Um, and I think that's a much bigger challenge in some ways than thinking, well, I'm gonna go out on my own and do something that's great um, and it's gonna radically transform things. The idea of innovation itself was completely wrong headed um, because the whole point was to to go and to learn more about what we already know, essentially. Um, uh, now, that does radically shift towards, um, you know, what, what creates the modern university is literally the idea of um, expecting students to go and to do uh, their own research. Um, and professors as well. So to do original research, which is the idea of the dissertation, um, the idea that you're gonna go and look at something that has not been done before and to uh, create new knowledge essentially. Um, and the university has been centered 
uh, on that notion and on educating students ultimately to become like their teachers, to have the capacity to do the same thing. Um, not simply absorb and repeat information, but become like their professors in being able to understand how knowledge is actually created and to do it ultimately themselves as well. There is, uh, in a way, the problem of innovation for innovation's sake, uh, just as there is the problem of very often in all of the fields of knowledge that, uh, that exist, especially probably in the humanities and in the social sciences of um, people uh, doing a lot of research, um, which is read by no one, uh, that doesn't really change uh, the perspective, but it's um, that's what you need actually to be able to get a job and to be evaluated positively. And this is where I see the innovation that we're continuing essentially to undertake in our fields as increasingly counterproductive. Um, and we could really innovate by really thinking about what is the point of all of this? Uh, I think innovation today, if, if it comes up with means to allow people um, to say, we all actually have to speak, all of the people also who are um, creating all of this new knowledge about the world, that it won't have a lot of meaning if we don't find ways also of speaking more uh, to each other about what we're discovering. Um, that's, that's, that's my hope. Um, because otherwise, um, it does become simply kind of a, a robotic process, uh, but without any kind of human decision making about where it's where what the meaning of it ultimately is.